Hi, I'm Barry Godden and welcome to my living room. This is going to be the home for a new series called BG Tips. I hope you like the title. If you do, comment down below. It's nothing to do with tea bags, but it's to do with hopefully giving advice on bikepacking, talking about my adventures, how to navigate, what to pack and how to poo in the wild. You name it, we can cover it here. If there's something in particular you want me to cover, please put it in the comments down below and I'll make sure I'll put it in a future video. Episode one. I thought we would basically start with a bit of a history about myself. Who the hell am I? Um, I started riding many, many, many years ago and it all started with my student loan and buying a Kona Cohen jump bike. Um, it was amazing. I'm a Londoner. I rode all the streets of London. I learned how to bunny hop, how to jump down stairs, turn on banks, and loads of key core skills, which really helped me in the future. Next, I then went and bought a full suspension bike. That got me into more trails, riding in nature. Our local spot, Surrey. So we ride the Surrey Hills, which is an amazing place to start. Natural trails. And that's the real thing I love. And that's where my real passion is. I dabbled in a little light um, racing. I did cross country racing. I've done a little bit of amateur downhill racing. But the thing I've learned is all those disciplines have all kind of enhanced my riding. I'm not good at any of them, but I have lots of respect for different things. And it kind of all combines into one in the end for myself. I come from the more extreme side of biking, so I'm, I ride a lot of extreme trails, down mountains, I've entered the Mega Avalanche four times, which is a mass start on the top of Alpe d'Huez. Um, 400 people start together, down a black rated ski run, absolute carnage. It's a downhill race for about an hour, boy it took me about an hour. Uh, but that was really great, but a real, real amazing thing to do. So next came along this adventure bug. And where did it start? It started in the pub of my friend Paul Crane. We were sitting there, it's come up to his birthday, and he goes, what do you want to do for my birthday? We can either go downhilling with uplifts in Spain or Italy, or we can go to Morocco, and you could take a sleeping bag and you can sleep on the floor. And I thought, that's an easy answer. I want to go and do that and go and explore somewhere completely different. And I've always had that real adventure vibe in myself, and that kind of a, it enhanced it. So off we went. There was a little truck that took us point to point each night. It carried our luggage, but we had to carry enough for the day. And we rode everywhere. It was incredible. We stayed in Jeets in the middle of nowhere. A real core experience of different cultures. And that gave me the real adventure bug. The people from that trip, we all went off and tried to do our own supported version of the Tour de Mont Blanc, which is um, you go around Mont Blanc but you go through three countries and you pass into those countries by going through mountain passes. It's quite a hardcore adventure, especially the year we did it. It was completely snowbound and we were hiking a bike in the snow fields for hours and it was, that was amazing. But I also learned there was a lot of people in that um, and we were staying in hostels or not hostels, huts in the middle of the mountains. And I wanted to take a tent and be totally self-sufficient. I had this whole thing, I wanted to be self-sufficient, because we were struggling to find food. There's various days we really kind of were getting a bit um, apprehensive not having food. And it was uh, it was just too much. And so I really wanted to become self-sufficient. So what did I do? Go and buy a tent. That's the first thing I did. And every August around my birthday time, me and my friend Alex Ball, we go on a bit of a road trip. We've done lots of big, weird experiences and adventures together. We've been on the Hoyt route, which is a stupid idea. We road tripped England, Wales, Scotland. Um, we normally just go away and do something really quite fun for a few days. This time, I took his bank details. I went out, I bought him a tent, sleeping bag, bags for his bike, and off we went bike packing. So my first experience was going to the Cairngorms, and we did the Cairngorms loop over four days. It was a brilliant experience, because what we did is we were carrying tents, breakfast, and a little bit of cooking gear, but we had dinners um, in pubs in the evenings. So we went out wild camped and it was a great introduction and I really recommend that's a kind of a good stepping stone. Go with a friend and have a great trip. Very sadly though, on day three or four, um, I got the uh, both ends and I uh, struggled to get around the next two days. But in true adventure spirit, I carried on filming and my friend Alex was kind of like, you're, you're mad. 
but it ended up me collapsing on the side of the road. Him happened to ride 20 miles again, get a car, and somehow found me in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but that's a whole story we can cover later on in another video. So that was the real start of bike packing for me. We used four suspension bikes on that trip. And with heavy loaded bags and suspension going up and down, we found the bags were kind of buzz on the tires. So the front bag under full compression and suspension would buzz and same with the back bags. So we couldn't use our dropper seat posts and it just didn't make much sense. So off I went and bought a bike packing bike. That for me was a Genesis Longitude, which has got 29 inch wheels. It was steel frame, full rigid, and um, it was bought for one idea in mind in particular, Iceland. And we'll come to that in a little bit. But my first voyage, I was desperate to get out. So off I went to do Devon coast to coast. I just strapped on bags. My frame bag hadn't arrived yet. So I just kind of used the bottle cage or one of the front bags and just kind of wedged it in the frame. It worked, it was great. Uh, but there's a little secret behind that trip because I wanted to see how the bike worked with all the gear on it. I never camped on that trip at all. But I carried everything. I carried cooking stoves, I carried my tent, my sleeping bag, and I was staying B&Bs all the way around. But again, another step into kind of getting used to it. So I'm one of these people who won't go full on, full out. I just kind of slowly get comfortable. And the thing with bike packing and wild camping, that's a key thing you need to do. You have to be comfortable in your abilities because when you go off and do crazy wild things, you could get stuck. So a lot of this time has been learned from experience and things going wrong and that knowledge actually helped me in the future. Next along came Peaks to Scotland. It was about a month before Iceland and I thought I have to get a long trip in. So off I went for nine days. I started in Edel in the Peak District and I looked at the Pennine Bridleway, which looked brilliant and it was an amazing route to do. It's actually quite rough and also goes through not a lot of many towns. Um, it kind of avoids towns and so I was a bit stuck for water one day and I was doing this really long climb and I hadn't had water for about three hours and uh, <laughs> there was this family walking down the hill and they're like, I said, have you got any water? Please give me some water. And they're like, well, we got the dog's water. The dog had his own water bottle, for goodness sake. So they very kindly poured that into my water bottle. And the dog was very happy licking puddles in various places. <laughs> but yeah, again, I've learned to filter water in the future because I didn't have a filter on me that trip. And again, you kind of cascade your education along. When I got to Kirby Stevens on that trip, I then set off on the Sandstone Way, which had only just been invented. And that took me up to Berwick-upon-Tweed and I then pitch for the Scottish border. So that's my first entry into Scotland on a bike packing bike. Next came Iceland. Iceland is one of those trips I will never ever forget. I had two weeks uh, with my other friend Ben Deacon and we went into the interior. But when we turned up we went to the local bike shop which was advised and tell them what your plan is and they'll kind of say if that's possible or not. We went in there, the girl went no, go away. You can't do any of that. We're like, why? It'd been the worst winter in 40 years. And it wasn't just the snow levels. It was the fact that at that time, the snow had just started to melt. So the rivers were suddenly going to be full up and at full spate. So being English and stupid, we set off anyway on exactly the route we had planned. This route was only planned by me, dabbled by Ben, but off I went. And it was a we pushed up a few big hills to start off with, and then we ended up in some snow fields. We had snow fields about two days. Um, that was quite spectacular. We were melting snow for water, and then to kind of cross, we went to this long bit around this um, lava field, as you find, and we thought, sod that, we go straight through the middle. So we're literally riding over dried up lava, and it was being on Mars. It was an incredible experience. Slightly low experiences later on in that trip where we kind of trudged through mud for 13 hours up to our knees. Uh, but I'd learned a lot of mental resiliency on that trip, which has helped me a lot in future adventures. The very next one being the Hoyt route. Uh, this was another one of my crazy birthday ideas with my friend Alex. And off we went. We're going to go and bike pack or stay in the, the huts in the Alps and do the Hoyt route. I've done the tour of the Mont Blanc. The Hoyt route must be as easy. Uh, no, we kind of went on the hardcore hikers route 
and it was on my birthday, we ended up carrying the bikes for 13 hours in a 14 hour day. It was a hard day. Um, and then we ended up another day after that being through boulder fields in the middle of nowhere and it was pretty tough. But Iceland had taught me a lot of this kind of, just deal with it. I'm here right now, I either keep going forwards because we can go backwards, that doesn't help. We can't go sideways, just keep going forwards. And that's why I found I was quite strong in terms of the mental aspects for bikepacking. And that you're not gonna get overnight. You need to do it over time, experience, and many, many, many trips. So build it up over time. Don't throw yourself into a two month trip. You might do absolutely well and many, many people just go around the world. So I'm definitely not saying don't do it. But for me, these little micro adventures kind of build up and really, really help you become a more confident bikepacker. We can't talk about my adventures without talking about Scotland. My first trip there was the North Coast 500. The route recommended to me by my mum from watching Country File. She was watching it as beautiful views. She goes, you should go do that. She doesn't normally encourage me to go and do trips, but it did look absolutely spectacular. So I set off from Inverness. I went the opposite way to everyone else. So I whizzed up the East Coast around the top and that meant I spent more time in the West Highlands. I wanted to go there particularly because I wanted to have big ideas of doing off-road passes and you know what, the weather wasn't there for me and I wasn't confident enough at the time. I, so I'm gonna talk about my slight problem. I carry far too much food for my trips. I carry all of my dinners for all of the days of my trip. My next one in Scotland was the Hebrides. I had 18 days and I set up with 18 dinners, breakfasts and lunch. Well, lunch, I might have gone to a cafe. But this is where I kind of have this feeling, I've learned it from Iceland, where if I have everything on my bike, it fits. And I can camp wherever I want, anything can go wrong, again, building my confidence, and I can just survive. I haven't got to try and wedge food into the bike. I did do a calculation, four baked bean tins equals 12 dehydrated meals. Doesn't quite take up the same amount of space, agreed, but Weight-wise, it wasn't that much extra to be carrying all of my food, but it did mean in the Hebrides I could stop wherever I wanted, I could have a long day, I could have a short day. A lot of those islands don't have many towns, and there wasn't that many places to top up. But it was an amazing trip. I was The Scottish Hebrides are the best place to go in terms of just having a real enjoyable adventure. It did rain for, <laughs> I think it was 16 of the 18 days, so I'm not that lucky with the weather, but camping on the coast, hearing different birds, seeing the sky and the coolings, oh, magical. Definitely recommend that on the top of everyone's list. Next adventure happened to be the north to south of Wales. And that's where I really wanted to make a decent film. So I spent lots of time self-filming myself, including walking through mud up to my knees, which involves walking through it once, setting the camera up, walking back again through it, getting my bike and then walking back through it again with my bike and then repeat. The next trip after that was the Highland Trail 550. And that was one I'm real, real proud of. I set off to properly film it. It's normally a race which people do in four to five days. The maximum you're allowed to do is eight. I gave myself 10 and 11 to get up from Glasgow. But I went off to film it. So I probably did more miles there and back and getting my camera up and down mountains than probably doing the full Highland Trail 550. I did lose time to do the Northern Loop, but watch the film, you'll find out why. But that was incredible. All those off-road passes I dreamed about on the North Coast 500, I was there doing them. And I was carrying a mass amount of weight again, but I got stronger. I was carrying two weeks worth of food, or well, 11 days worth of food, um, but it didn't matter because I realized my bike got lighter. So by the time I came to the real hard hike bikes, my bike was very heavy, but lighter. Um, I also am carrying huge amount of battery bricks, camera gear, uh, so yes, yeah, so I am not a light packer. So if you want a fast and light packing, don't watch this channel. <laughs> I pack far too much. And my friends do ask me, is there a kitchen sink? But I have learned I can almost pack a camping chair, so I will show you that. 
But yeah, I'm not known to pack light, but I do enjoy myself. Other trips happened in Scotland. I went back for a week on the Isle of Skye. I then sent, went back for another two weeks in Eastern Scotland, then explored Aberdeenshire. Got food poisoning after the first week and the only night I stayed in a youth hostel, all the rest was wild camped. And in that youth hostel, I thought I'd have a microwave meal. So there I am camping <laughs> with all my kit, with all my food. And the one night I go to a youth hostel, I couldn't be bothered. So I went out, got a microwave meal and got ill. So you know what? Don't eat microwave meals when you're doing bike packing. And the adventures continued. And I'm gonna talk about more and more and more in these future videos. So please follow along, subscribe, press the little bell thing, wherever it is, so you get alerts when my new videos are out. And I wanna get you on a bike, strap your bags on, go and have your own adventure, go and camp in the wild. It will change your life forever. So comment down below, let me know what you think of this first episode and join the journey. Happy adventuring. Ciao for now. Um.